please join me in welcoming Brian Messick. Um, part of this is actually introducing speakers because following me, uh, I will introduce Ms. Cindy Burns with the Coastal Center for Developmental Services, um, who will tag team this little presentation. And what a great opportunity. I want to thank all of you for being here and allowing me the opportunity to speak to you about something I'm very passionate about. You'll see a little bit of that in me. My passion, I'll wear it out on my sleeve. So if you hear me crack up from time to time, um, just bear with me and help me through it. Um, with that, um, as a parent of a child with Down syndrome, um, and as an advocate of our community, you're, you're a great audience to hear our story about a diverse, a real diverse workforce and how um, looking at the opportunity to consider employing an adult that is differently able will not only change the life of that individual, but change your organization and change what you do and how your organization um, uh, just um, and, and we're here to tell you a little bit about that story. We think it's really, really important as business owners and business leaders in our community to understand that because our workforce is changing. It's changing constantly with um, you know, our understanding of the differently abled. And I'll tell you right now, when Sean was born, we knew I'm the walking, talking poster child of not knowing about people that are differently abled as many of us refer to, disabled. Um, what I am finding out as a parent and as an advocate, that it's truly different abilities. It is not a disability. They have so much to offer, not just your families and your friends, but, but our community and our workforce. And that's what we're here to try to teach y'all and tell you that there's a workforce not only today, but more so tomorrow, that is going to be prepared um, to be meaningful contrib contributors to our community um, and our, our workforce. Um, I never would have thought that at six months we would be teaching Sean sign language. Why in the world would you teach a typical child, so-called typical child, sign language at six months old? Why, even furthermore, would you teach a child with Down syndrome sign language at six months old? Well, what we're learning is, is that these children, these people, are truly capable of so much more than we ever gave them credit for. And at age three, Sean was signing you know, over 500 signs. He was sight reading 700 plus words. Um, and, and this is leading to much more prepared people that were formerly no, believed to be incapable of the kind of things they truly are capable of. Now, as a representative and as an advocate and as a parent, um, I don't do much more than provide some inspiration. And as a representative of the Low Country Down Syndrome Society, we looked at our uh, membership and, and what we're doing with them and the community, and we, we know we had a pretty good picture of how we're serving our membership, you know, birth through teens. And we were missing out on how to provide that after teen life um, support and assistance for people that are differently able, especially those with Down syndrome. And we looked at that and said, how can we say that our community is better served by looking at employing the differently abled? And six years ago, we introduced an event called Night of Champions. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Night of Champions at the end. And Night of Champions is an event where we celebrate adults with different abilities who are actively employed in our workforce. Can I just ask how many people may, here may have been to Night of Champions? Okay, beautiful, what a great opportunity. Um, at the end of this, I'll tell you a little bit more about that. But I will tell you, through Night of Champions, we do in provide that inspiration to connect an employer with a capable employee. And with that, I am going to introduce Ms. Cindy Burns with the Coastal Center for Developmental Services. If you can't get that out, we just refer to it as CCDS. Um, she's the one who does all the work. We provide the inspiration. We try to in express the importance of employing the differently abled. 
Cindy's job is to make that connection between employer and employee, and the amazing job they do at the Coastal Center for Developmental Services um, really makes what we do at Night of Champions throughout the year with the Low Country Down Syndrome Society possible. So, thank you with that. I'll on what people with different abilities could do. And you know, I often think, I have blonde hair and blue eyes, and if somebody put this blonde hair, blue eyed girl in an accounting office, I would turn it upside down, because I'm a talker, right? And so they could not deal with this. I, they would say, out of this office. And so why would we think that because you have a different ability, that you need to be pigeonholed into one job? So I want you to take a second. I've got a couple of videos I want to show you, and I'll introduce you to some friends of mine. One of the people you're going to meet today is Jason, and he was hired as a direct link from Night of Champions. And I'm telling you, what Low Country Down Syndrome is doing to really support what Coastal Center is doing in the community is a bit, the biggest blessing I can ever tell you. Because people go with an open heart, and they really want to see how they can make a difference. So um, Jason was one of those individuals. And you're also going to meet, meet a guy named Nick Thias, and he works at Smith Brothers. He worked at Smith Brothers before they closed, and now he's at Publix. And that's quite a transition when you've worked on somewhere for a long time, and all of a sudden you're saying, well, we're closed. Guess what? You've got to find another job. That's hard for all of us. Remember when the recession hit, and we're all going, ah, oh, I gotta find. You know, people are getting laid off. What am I going to do? Well, it's the same for the people that I serve. And then lastly, <laughs> Um, I'm going to introduce you to Kenneth, and Kenneth works for a small business here called Kitchen on the Square. Has anybody heard of Kitchen on the Square? Well, y'all are going to be amazed by these three people. So anyway, we're going to show you this video, and then we're going to talk some more about it. hospital and you spend three 10 week programs and you're getting this opportunity to really learn both the soft skills and the, um, the more medical skills. Well, anyway, she got pregnant. You know, unfortunately that happens sometimes that when people um, get into things maybe they shouldn't. So anyway, she got pregnant she had to quit the program. And she was like, what's going to happen to my life? Well, I was in the interview the other day at Memorial Hospital, and we finished up the interview, and she did the most amazing, she truly did a great interview. And at the end of the thing, they said, do you have any questions? All right, can we stop it? Um, anyway, and so at the end of the interview, she says, I have something I want to say. Now, this is a lady that graduated from Savannah High, and when I took her on the interview, they were saying, why are you taking her? 
she's so rough around the edges. You know, y'all seen those kind of girls. They kind of snap when they talk. And we're like, I don't know, but I've seen her hard. So it's in the interview. And she looks up. And this is an interview of eight people. Have y'all ever been on a group interview before? How intimidating is that? I don't like them still. And I'm intimidated right now with all of y'all, so I can imagine how she was feeling. But anyway, she looks up. She says, I have one more thing. And she puts her hands up like this, and next thing she puts her hands in her, like this, and she goes, I cannot believe I was given a second chance. You know, y'all believed in me. Where would I be right now? And now I can provide for my family. And that's how lives are changed, y'all. You know, she could have been a lady that was sitting back in the streets with nowhere to go, but now when you go to Memorial Hospital, you're probably going to be seeing her. So that's what we're talking about. It's a life changes. What if we were all judged immediately by our rough exterior? Or this blonde hair, blue eyes. You know there's stereotypes that go with that. And so why, why would we do that to other people because they have a different chromosome or because they have a different DNA? So anyway, let me introduce you to my friends. All right, let's back that up. Oh, there's again. Right now, Kevin Kelly does a lot of his work in the basement of Kitchens on the Square, popping towels. That goes on me, I lost him. The towels come folded and have to be popped out of the packaging. The trick is popping the towels without ripping them. He folds them and one of his co-workers prints slogans on them, which are then sold upstairs. But he's an excellent worker. He is a towel popper extraordinaire. We call him a towel tech extraordinaire. Uh, he has done a fabulous job literally since his first day. Kenneth also stocked shelves with merchandise. He says he loves his job and his co-workers. Well, actually, they were kind of cool. They were kind of nice, sweet, and generous at that. Kenneth says having a job lets him help his mother out with household expenses. He'd like to buy her something nice. Because I love her and I respect her all my heart. That's what a good son's supposed to do. Kenneth's job will soon be changing because they're going to start outsourcing their towel business. But don't you worry about Kenneth because he's getting a promotion. He's been promoted to merchandise manager, which will mean more hours for him. I thought, hello, merchandise manager. So he has been promoted, I think, quicker than anybody in the history has ever worked here. And Kenneth says his dream job has always been one that involved stocking things. I won't work someplace I can be easy. Nick Thios has been working at Smith Brothers Village Market on Skidaway Island since August. He puts in 16 hours a week, primarily up front, but he helps out wherever he's needed. What do you do here? What kind of work do you do? I get grills runners. Nick enjoys his co-workers and all the people he meets at the store. His manager, Gary Griffin, says Nick is very personable, has a great sense of humor, and loves talking to people. Nick is very conscientious about everything he does. He, he tries to do it the very best job he can. He asks a lot of questions to make sure he's doing it correctly. And we're all proud of him for that. Nick is especially proud of the way he bags groceries. I talk fast. <laughs> Nick enjoys working and likes making money. He says he buys books with all the money he makes. He also enjoys all kinds of sports like tennis, baseball, swimming, hockey, and football. Which is proud of Nick and what he's been able to accomplish here. And, and to be a part of his life, it, it just makes us all better people. Oh, you're the world. says he's made a lot of friends. He plans to work at Smith Brothers for a long time. Well, I wanted y'all to meet Jason. Um, Jason works at a logistics company, OA Logistics, and that's where we kind of messed up with the first one. But Jason um, was really interesting. Jason did not have a driver's license. And do you know how cool it is if you don't have a driver's license to jump on a big old Zamboni? Have y'all seen those big warehousing things? So they taught him how to do it. And I'll tell you what.
what ended up happening. Jason wasn't the only one that learned something there. And I wish you had seen the video. You can go on WJCL's Community Champion. They do a video for us every month, um, the first Monday of the month. And you can see that video, I hope you will, with Jason. But what ended up happening was Jason didn't learn nearly as much as OE Logistics did because they weren't real sure what they were thinking when Joe um, had introduced us to them. And I'm saying, hey, I have a person with a different ability and I want you to put him on a $60,000 piece of machinery and drive around your warehouse. And he does a great job. And now his, I'll tell you what, his different ability is not so different anymore. And now he looks very much, he fits very much into the warehouse culture. He is very nicely tatted up and very proud of them. So anyway, I do want to leave you with this final note. And I would not be Cindy Burns if I did not say this to you. We feel like the value of a person should not be determined by status, salary, or their stereotype, but their passion, purpose, and dedication to making a difference. And you know what? Isn't that what we all live for? Let's kill the stereotypes. Let's make a difference. And I really do appreciate your time. I'm going to pass it over to Brian. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, a couple things. A little, little bit of a side note. Uh, tell you that recently Congress and the President signed into act um, a bill called the ABLE Act. Prior to the ABLE Act, um, adults were restricted to how, how much money they could earn. And even though, regardless of how capable they were, um, because they earned too much money, they would lose some of their uh, government services. Um, I'll tell you that, that the ABLE Act has kind of lifted that barrier and allowed individuals who are capable of contributing um, not, not just you know, to a workforce and to a job, but, but to their own families, to their own benefit, to give their, themselves some direction of their own life. Um, the ABLE Act has really made a big difference in their ability to do that. With that, I'll tell you that universally what you'll hear at Night of Champions is about the employer that wanted to do something good for another person. And they will simply say, it wasn't long before we learned the tables got turned on us that every one of the presenters and the champions and, and the employers will, will stand up to, step up to that microphone that night and simply say, we were the ones who benefited from this opportunity. Not